2022 Rebel 1100. The Rebel 1100, you're getting a machine that rides like a cruiser in town, yet dials up the power and handling, so you'll have plenty of fun on the highway and in the canyons too. The Rebel has a fresh, clean, contemporary sense of style. The Honda Rebel 1100 might seem like an odd motorcycle to make. Take it one step further, the liquid-cooled 1084cc parallel twin engine seems like an odd choice for a segment that is dominated by air-cooled V-twins. Honda powers its newest Rebel with a retuned version of the same engine that drives the proven Africa twin. Revised timing in the SOHC valve train, altered ignition timing, and a beefed-up flywheel with 20% more mass and 31% more inertia help with the low-down grunt. The Honda Rebel 1100 is an oddball in the most mainstream and conservative segment of the motorcycle industry. There's a lot to like about cruiser-class motorcycles. The low seat heights, the relaxed riding positions, the easy-to-ride torque their twin-cylinder engines deliver. But when it comes to riding a little faster, that's where most traditional cruisers come up short. With a style all of its own, the current Honda Rebel lineup is very much seen as being a family of cruisers, though they don't necessarily follow the cookie-cutter cruiser ethos that others have used to define the segment. Every Rebel comes equipped with our anti-lock brake system and cruise control. You can choose between our revolutionary automatic DCT transmission or a conventional six-speed manual. A liquid-cooled parallel twin mill mounts in the frame with a jaunty 22.5-degree forward cant. It sports a 92mm bore and 81.5mm stroke for a total displacement of 1,084cc and a 10 to 1 compression ratio. That'll call for at least mid-grade fuel or an octane additive to prevent knock-ping dieseling. With 85 horsepower, 64 kilowatts, at the peak, and 72 foot-pounds, 98 Nm, of torque on tap, this incarnation of the 1084cc parallel twin engine has its noticeable differences from its dual-sport counterpart. First off, Honda has increased the flywheel weight by 20%, which results in an increase of spinning inertia by 32%. The 270-degree firing order gives it an attractive lope at idle and smooth power at the upper rev range. A ride-by-wire throttle transmits rider demand to the engine after it washes through the Honda selectable torque control filter. The HSTC prevents spin out of the rear wheel, plus there's a quartet of power delivery profiles 3 pre-programmed and one that's user-tunable for total power control, and a wheelie control that helps prevent moon shots when you come out of the hole. The valve timing and valve lift have also been revised, which creates a unified pulse feeling around 4000 rpm on the digital tachometer. Then there are the more obvious changes to the engine's intake and exhaust. All of this creates a punchy motor that pulls very linearly across the rev range to the 8000 rpm redline. That power can be augmented, however, as Honda has included a fairly robust electronics package with the Rebel 1100. There are four riding modes, three preset modes, one user mode, with three power levels, three traction control levels, plus the ability to disable the TC, and three engine brake control settings. The Honda Rebel 1100 also has cornering ABS, 
which is powered by a 6-axis IMU. That said, 